Okay, that time again. Mystery Tackle Box Pro. This one is for September. A lot of good stuff in this one. As always with the MTB Pro, they're always pretty good. Uh, let's start off here. Ultimate Strike Baits. B8 Lab. Get it? Bait Lab. Very clever. Uh, we have here Swim Minnows uh, with some squid scent. Actually, it's extreme squid scent. Give it a look at these here. They're even notched, actually. I was looking at this. They're notched for where you put the hook through. You have the marks here for where you want to put the, the, the hook through it. So you can avoid ripping the bait. It's also got a slot in the belly. Uh, for hiding the hook. Whew, I can smell that from here. It does smell strong. Um, definitely smells sea fishy, squiddy, for sure. It's a great color for here, though, for me. This is a good color. To, the green pumpkin red flake or green pumpkin blue flake also works really well. But the red and the green, that works pretty good. Uh, it's a good bluegill imitator, crawdad imitator. A lot of the, the bottoms uh, of the creeks and the rivers and the lakes here are muddy. And in muddy water, bait fish and crawdads have a tendency to match the color of the bottom of the lake or the river that they're living in. So they'll kind of change color to adapt to that that color so this is a really good color it's a paddle tail swim bait it's ribbed the ribbing of course displaces the water uh, interested to try that bait lab I like to they pack it the package the baits they put them in solid holders so the baits don't get crushed uh, the baits retain the shape that way they don't get all messed up now next out of the box here we have more sea spin lures I got some of these last month and I had posted a video with the worm when I had uh, used the this little blade in the worm I had caught quite a few fish on it bass and small pickerel and pike uh, this is another lure from Sea Spin. Uh, it's called a Shrimp U. It's a four inch soft bait. You can see the shape of it here. It's kind of like a shrimp body and it's got some arms on the side of it there. It's an unusual looking bait. Let's open it up here and have a look at it. These are really strong smelling of fish or like krill or shrimp. They had a strong odor to them. Just like these bait lab ones. There they are. It's actually, again, it's enclosed in a packet uh, so they don't get wrecked. A real, again, another good color. It's like a light brown. I'm trying to see if there's a color listed on here. SH10 is the color. Shrimp U, 4 inch. It's an unusual looking bait, but it's well protected. Let me get one out. There it is. So it's basically almost like a minnow body. I could see where you get the shrimp, the shrimp look from it. And then it's got these little tentacles on the side of it. And a little flapper tail on it. But it's not a paddle tail. So I I would imagine it doesn't it's ribbed, so it will display some water, but not it's not gonna have a big thumping action like that paddle tail minnow. Good to work on the bottom though with a jig. It's a good size too, and it's a good color. It's pretty translucent, as you can see. It's, so it would be good for like clear water for a river. Definitely an unusual bait. Definitely you can smell the odor from that too. It smells like uh, it's pretty like the same as the worm. It's not quite as strong as the worm, the sea spin worm. So there's the sea spin. That's the, the second bait I've got from those, and it's again baits I haven't seen before. Pretty unusual. Looking forward to trying that. The, those other baits, those worm baits that I got from sea spin, they work really well. 
And then what else have we got in here? Ah, cannot go wrong with the Rapala. This is a DT4. This is a Dive 2 series uh, crankbait. And it's in a craw color, a green craw color. Crawfish all over the country, they're a hundred different colors. Uh, sometimes they're green, sometimes they're brown, sometimes they're red. When they're molting, they change color. They'll go yellow, they'll go red, they'll go green, they'll blow blue. Uh, especially when they, they're molting their shell, they're all different sorts of colors. Uh, let's see if it lists the color here. Mardi Gras. As you can see, it's a nice bottle green color. Let's get it out of the box here. It's a DT4, so it should work at about four feet. That's what's nice about the Rapalas when they mark their baits like that. Uh, that gives you good, good depth. There it is. It's not a square bill, but it's a short bill bait. And like I said, it's in a craw, crawfish green. It's got a glittered, or a dark black with the glitter in it. You can see an unusual looking hook on the back of that. I have other Rapala baits that have these VMC wide gap trebles on them. Uh, this actually works really well. And I have had fish where they will short strike crankbaits like this, especially small baits. And they'll just nip at the back side of it. And if they get that extra wide gap hook, it is very difficult for them to throw that out of the, you know, to, to throw that hook because of the big gap on it. It gets a good deep hook up. You can see here if I hold it closer to the camera. You got that one hook there that's longer than the rest. It works. That works really well. I've had caught fish on the on crankbaits uh, like this. They're they're VMC hooks. And I've caught the, you, I've only ever seen them on the Rapala baits. So I haven't seen them on anything else. But I've had caught fish just on that hook, uh, where they you know they'll head shake the bait and they'll try and throw that hook out. This hook has a real tendency to stay hooked. Uh, sometimes they'll, you know these smaller arm hooks they will they will throw, but this one very difficult for them to throw. So I do have some. I don't have this particular bait, but I do have other. I have a lot of other Rapala crankbaits, but I do have some other uh, crankbaits and X trap baits with that VMC hook, and that works really well. So that's the idea behind that that EWG hook. So oh, Rapala crankbaits always good. Rapala always makes quality quality lures. I've never got a bad one yet. Now next in here. Whoa, we have a deep worker crankbait here. This look at the lip on that sucker. This is a skinny bear deep 2.5. It doesn't give a depth. It says it's in deep 2.5 sexy shad. It's a sexy shad color. Like a strike king sexy shad with the chartreuse stripe. Let's get it out here. Oh yeah, that's a big bill. That's a big bill. It's got the shad spot, the chartreuse stripe, the blue back, the glitter in there white body with the glitter on it too that's a nice finish but look at the size of that bill that's definitely for running probably 15 16 feet maybe 20 feet if you use light enough line that's a really big bill I have the hooks tied together here so they don't clack off of each other getting dull but they're pretty sticky I don't fish a lot of super deep diving crankbaits I don't really have the water here to do that. A lot of the water, the deep water that I fish is sheer drop. So it can go from, you know, a tapered shelf from, you know, 5, 8, 10, 15 feet. And then all of a sudden it goes from 15 feet to 80 feet or 100 feet. Or uh, I have real long, uh, like, walls in the reservoirs and stuff here that they just go straight down from the edge, like rock walls right down 20, 30 feet. You can fish these along rock walls. They're good for suspended fish or for fish that are sitting on deep ledges. Uh, that's what you would use these for. But like I said, I don't really get an opportunity uh, to use a lot of super deep diving crankbaits. But maybe it's something I'll have to try out. Catch some fish that I wouldn't ordinarily catch. This is a real nice one. It's got a heavy... There's like a weight transfer in it. 
so you can cast it long. A lot of times with these baits, you need to cast them a long way so you can get it to dive down to its intended depth. Uh, you can hear it. You hear the weight slide in there. Also, it's got a rattle. So yeah, that's a nice, nice profile, shad profile. Pretty decent size. Fishing for the deep ledge bass. Now, last but not least, what else have we got in the box? This is an interesting looking device. Freedom live action hybrid jig is actually a skirted jig that attaches to a weighted head and it free swims. Uh, so the weight is not attached solidly to the hook. It actually pivots on the head. Now, they give me one here that's loaded with a skirt and then one I have that's empty with just a, you know, a hook and then the head. So that, I could say, oh, it's a quarter ounce in weight. Seven grams, it's a quarter ounce. Let's get it out of the box here. I've been wanting to try one of these. Oh yeah, there it is, look. So, there's the head, and the weight is in the head, of course, but then the whole, the body is free to pivot behind the head. So I could put like a, 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 a oh, actually it's rigged here. It's got a silicon skirt on it, like a living rubber skirt. But in here, it's got a bait keeper that's pinned on the hook. So I could screw whatever bait I want on here, like a trailer, and it's got an EWG hook on it. So I could put a craw or a swim bait body or something on there. That's it. This is a black and blue skirt, which is a pretty standard color. This will work anywhere, black and blue, uh, especially in deeper water. Black and blue do not change color. They're constantly black and blue. It's not like red that changes as it deeper it goes down, it will change. Uh, but that's going to give an interest in action there. And it's a bullet head, so it come through grass. I don't know how it would do in rock, but for swimming it through grass or vegetation, it would probably be pretty good. You want more of a football type head for uh, for rock. Let's have a look at this here. Oh, it's just got a screw, a twist lock in it in the back of the head. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can get it to focus on it. There you go. So the hook goes on like a corkscrew almost. Let's see if we can get it on there. Probably tricky to get in here, but we'll give it a shot. Oh, there it is. And then you just twist it on. Wiggle it through. There we go. Just like that. So then the, the hook is on there. You see how much freedom it has there. You can see how much freedom it has there. It moves around. So for, the, for this, I can put any type of skirt on there I want. Or any type of trailer on there I want. Or I could fish a big worm on the back of that if I wanted to as well. Floating worm. 10 inch worm. Well, for a 10 inch worm, I want a bigger hook than that. But you can see it, it, it has, certainly has a lot of motion. That hook can move 180 degrees. And almost 180 degrees up and down as well. So it's got a, a big range of motion on there. That's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to trying that out. And then if I want to take it apart, just like that. So I can put any type of or size of hook I want on there. And any type of skirt I want, I can mount on the... I have a whole box load of different colored skirts. White, green pumpkin, chartreuse, anything I want I could put on that. That works pretty good. And I think that's it. Got the bulk, of course, and the Mystery Tackle Box sticker. Can't go wrong with that. And with that, it's time to go fishing, I'm saying. Definitely looking forward to trying some of those new baits. Uh, although fishing has been pretty tough recently, so I've been using a lot of finesse plastics, and I'm working on a video on that right now. Tips on high pressure water and using the finesse soft plastics. So good luck to anybody out fishing and thanks for watching guys.